All right, John. Well, our next question is kind of an intervention type question. So our question is, is use of incentive spirometry effective in this population? Some people uh, uh, have kind of minimized the, uh, the impact of incentive spirometry over the years. Um, I think if, if done properly, incentive spirometry can, uh, has a lot of benefits. Um, in particular, uh, in prevention, um, kind of prevention of pulmonary issues, uh, prevention, you know, kind of keeping the airways open. So the purpose of an incentive spirometer um, is to give you an incentive to take a deep breath, really. Um, so it's just really a, a kind of a method of biofeedback. So, you know, you've probably kind of all seen an incentive spirometer before. Um, here's one. Um, most incentive spirometers have uh, two components. One, uh, over here on the side, kind of newer um, incentive spirometers give you a little smiley face or a frowny face. So if you go too fast, you get a you get a frowny face. If you go too slow, you get a frowny face. And then if you, you know, if you're like Goldilocks and you're right there in the middle, then ah, uh, everything's just right. Um, the second thing on the incentive spirometer is what most people pay attention to, which is the uh, the height, uh, how high you're going up on the incentive spirometer. Um, again, the purpose of the incentive spirometer is to give a patient an incentive to take a deep breath. Um, and deep breathing is probably important here. You know, as you kind of breathe in, you know, you're taking in oxygen, you're kind of keeping the lungs open. Um, if we can keep the lungs open uh, in patients that have uh, COVID-19, you know, perhaps we can uh, prevent uh, kind of a secondary uh, bacterial infection. Um, so the last thing they need is kind of a, a virus like COVID-19. Um, and on top of that, get uh, bacterial pneumonia. So we want to kind of keep the lungs open, healthy, um, and incentive spirometry is one way to do that. Some people are just kind of motor morons, and you know, I mean, you've tried to teach people a quad set, and they don't know how to do a quad set. Um, if they can't do a quad set, then teaching somebody how to use an incentive spirometer is even more challenging. Um, so, I mean, I would I would venture to say 25% of the patients that um, I've tried to show incentive spirometry can't quite figure it out appropriately. Um, in that case, I just ask patients to, can you take a deep breath in and hold it for me? Everybody can do that. So again, uh, the incentive spirometer is just a biofeedback device. It's supposed to be an incentive, not a disincentive. So, you know, if your patients are getting frustrated with an incentive spirometer, then just set it to the side and, um, and tell them, you know, hey, when you see your incentive spirometer, I want you to take four or five good deep breaths in and hold it um, because it shouldn't be frustrating. It should be something kind of encouraging. Uh, it may not help specifically treat or get rid of uh, uh, COVID-19 or the symptoms, but it's certainly going to be kind of effective. Um, uh, you know, kind of the risk benefits, there's, there's no risk to it uh, and the benefits and kind of preventing kind of atelectasis and preventing kind of further um, pneumonia is going to be important.